Yeah, great. What are, are some of the things you all got to do to get, um, you know, many by weeks over, get re, uh, re, re going. get ready for the Panthers here? Yeah, man, it's feeling good to be back on a regular schedule week, um, you know, and uh, as far as just being normal preparation from Wednesday to the game on Sunday, it's feel like we've been all, all over the place, you know, which is which is a good thing. But um, it's been awesome to get back in a regular regular um, momentum and doing what we got to do and uh, preparing for the Panthers and, uh, you know, ready to have a good working Wednesday. And uh, Trouba Hubbard uh, looks like one of their weapons. Mm -hmm. And uh, Deontay coming up from Pittsburgh. Yep. You know. Those weapons. Yeah, for sure, man. I always thought Hubbard was a great bag, man. He, he does a really good job of um, hitting hitting the holes um, like without guessing, and he could do a good job of manipulating um, guys that's reading the gaps. So he he's very he's a very um, decisive back, and uh, he, you know he's fast, quick, and uh, he, he does he's been doing a good job for him in my opinion. And then um, having um, Johnson at receiver, Adam Adam another weapon. So um, so they definitely got some weapons, some guys who had a lot of success in this league, and we got to do our best to try to stop them. We're open now, guys. Brady, what's your thought on the year that Jesse Bates has had? I think he's having a great year, um, you know, as far as, you know, getting getting the pick, getting the forced fumbles, and uh, also some of the things that don't show up on the stat sheet, you know, are just growing as a leader and um, just continue to, um, you know, just to elevate his resume. And uh, so I'm excited for him, but I'm more excited for what's to come, you know, and uh, I think the best is yet to come for um, him and everybody else on his team. But Jesse in particular, man, he, he's a special player, a special person, and I'm, I'm excited to see his success. Since the safety one defensive player of the year, is it is it difficult from that position to make that type of impact because you don't get a ton of the counting stats, whether you know interceptions necessarily, sacks, that type of thing. Um, I I mean, has it happened before? Boy. Okay, yeah. So it happened before. So I mean, if it happened before, I mean, you know, it is it is what it is. But I mean, he has a special knack for uh, finding the ball, which is really what it's about. You know, on offense, defense, special teams is all about the ball. So when you can impact the game in that way. And um, especially in the time like last week, when it's a crucial, um, you know, stop time, where we got to try to at least get the offense the ball back, and, and you make a play happen like that, that's just that's don't happen by accident. And um, so, um, so that that kind of effort has to be recognized. And but at the end of the day, things like awards and stuff like that, I don't think Jesse B would tell you all that stuff take care of itself. You know what I'm saying? It's all about the week by week preparation and the work that he put in. That's unseen is why you can see the results that he has on the field, and it helps us as a team things that don't show up, show up on the stat sheet. Do you have any specific examples off the top of your head of like what those might be? I mean, it could just be leadership qualities or, you know, maybe shutting off a side half of the field in coverage, whatever it may be. And then that's what I referred to when I was saying that. When you say he has a special knack for finding the ball, can you describe kind of from your perspective what that looks like or what that means? I mean, whether it's my perspective or it's the reality of, I mean, his forced fumbles, interceptions, that's what I mean when I say knack for the ball, you know what I'm saying? And uh, things like that aren't accidents, you know? And um, and that's 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 something that when I say that, that's a trait that he has and um, something that's definitely of high value. And uh, we appreciate it being on our team. Is that, is that taught or is that something you just have? Or how do you, how do you? I mean, it's something that's, I mean, you definitely have to work at it. You know, it's a skill that's home and some things just, some things and some guys, you know, they got that it factor, you know, that, that you're born with. But it, I mean, but at the end of the day, um, you never want to take away from the effort and time and the focus that somebody individually has to accomplish a goal. And that's clearly something that he is focused on. Is there anyone else you've played with that maybe has the ability to make those impact plays that you talk about um, in your career that you've seen? Or is he someone that just does it at a really elite He does it at a really elite level. I think... Um, when DeMonte KZ played here, he had a really good job of finding the ball. Um, and um, I haven't spoken to him in a minute, but he, he had one year he had like led the league in picks or something like that. And during the, when he was on special teams, he used to cause a lot of forced fumbles and stuff like that. So he was a guy who really, really could find the ball and was just a um, really good physical player that could cover, cover deep. So, um, but he one of them guys who kind of had that knack, it, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, Jesse is, um, is, is a, a special player in, in, the, in the sense of, um, just always having to be accounted for and where he's at, you know, covering, where he's going to show up in a run game. And on the second and third efforts, when the running back is tied up, somebody who will come try to punch the ball out and uh, has accuracy doing it. So, I mean, he's, he's doing good. Great, Bruce. Thank you.
who got his first playing time on Thursday. What did, what did he add to that unit on, uh, in that game? And then what have you observed from him just going kind of going about his business so far? Yeah, man, super excited to see him get his turn, man. And uh, he, he definitely took advantage of it, had some nice plays in the run. Um, he, he, he's a really good pass rusher, so I'm excited to see him uh, show that when he gets more ops to do it. But, I mean, it was good to see him go out there. And he played hard with great effort. Um, and uh, he was knocking blocks back, shedding blocks. And I think that was something that was really impressive to see in live action. He was ready to go. He was ready to play. He was waiting for his opportunity, and he didn't disappoint. So I'm excited to see him get more turns. And, um, and you know, he, 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 he's, um, he got a lot of, lot of good football ahead of him. I think I think it all works together. I think it all works together from coverage to pressure from us, us up front, from the calls working together and just complimenting each other. And I, and I, and and um, we doing a good job of you know so quarterback getting the ball out and we stop him you know get off the field stuff like that. But we got to be more aware on um, like say if it's first and ten or second and eight, you know, not just always knowing if it's a pass situation, you know, which you got to convert faster. And, um, you know, we got to, we got to, we got to be better. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, that's the reality of it. There ain't no excuses in then, but I can reassure you that we're doing the things enough self scout to, um, be able to be more productive in that area. And, um, and nobody wants it more than a man in this building and, uh, coaches and players included. So I'm excited for that to, you know, to come out that you guys are very aware of when you're going back and watching the tape, like, ah. Could have gotten a little bit more there. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Or missed any missed ops, you know what I'm saying? Like any missed opportunities where you was out there and maybe got juked by the quarterback or something like, or something we wrong didn't go on a certain blitz I was supposed to go, or maybe somebody was supposed to be covered that to make the quarterback hold the ball. I mean, it's a million different ways you can look at it to find out what's what's this and what's that. At the end of the day, though, none of that matter. We got to get them on the ground. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I think that's what the focus is for everybody. Brady, what's something that maybe you don't you know about this team now that you didn't know when the season started? Um, not much. I mean, I, I think we're a resilient group. I always thought it was a resilient group. I thought we were super talented. Um, I said that, um, and I feel like it's one of the most talented teams I've been on. I mean, it's got a possibility to be super, super productive. And so, I mean, that's not, nothing much that I'm surprised about. And I'm, I'm, I'm also just encouraged that it's, we got so much growing room to go. So. That's that's really I'm really not too surprised by much. Um, whether it's um, you know limiting some of the big plays that have flipped the field for us, and that's just being super critical because it don't happen a lot versus the defense, and um, so just those things are just the one-offs or oh next time or we talk about the sacks or you know maybe a drive like missing a tackle here, missing a tackle there. Just a just a little cleanup that we can focus on, and that's going to pay big dividends um, going forward. And I think playing um, as a as a, as far as team, all three units working together, and that's something that I definitely think that um, we're getting better at versus it being kind of lopsided. And you know, so I'm, I'm excited to see everything come together and uh, just continue to get better. You're a veteran. You've kind of been through some good times and bad times here. But I know you guys take it one week at a time. But how excited are you? Three and two, fast start in the division. Another division game coming up, and just about the the, the route that this team is on. Yeah, I'm excited about the route that we're on. Uh, I'm excited to be undefeated in division, and uh, I'm not shy about saying that. Um, uh, I'm excited to be in the position that we are going forward, uh, being in the driver's seat. And um, but I'm also even more excited because, like I said earlier in the press, we are continuing to get better every week. And that's the sweet part about it. And um, and guys are hungry to get better every week. Nobody is. Um, feeling like we arrived, we, I mean, we played five games so far, man. We still got 12 games to go, and uh, it's a lot of lot of football left. And um, our best is required, and that's what it's going to take every day for us to work. But to be, to you know, acknowledge where we are in the present moment, I'm, I'll be remiss not to say that I'm not excited, and it doesn't feel good because it do feel good. I am excited, and uh, <laughs> and uh, it just makes you want to continue to go harder. When you say super talented, uh, is that something you determine just from being in practice, or is there something you say like, oh, this guy? I mean, being in the NFL 10 years now, I know what a good player look like. <laughs> I know what a bad player look like. And we got a lot of good players on our team, and I'm excited that they're here. Like, uh, how can you tell what makes a, a team or player hungry? Like, is it what they're doing outside? Like, you can tell physically is great, but mm -hmm. 
What makes them? I mean, just just the work ethic, man. The work ethic, the mannerisms, the confidence that you got when you take the field. Um, it, it all goes into um, you know the makeup of a player, the swag that somebody has. It, it matters. You know what I'm saying? Like if somebody can have all the talent in the world. But if you, when the lights come on, if you freeze up, it don't matter, you know? And uh, you can have somebody who you may not have the most talent in the world, but might just be a dog competitor. So no matter what it may look like, you know that person gonna give you your all. And when you got a mix of all these different characters, and but at the end of the day, everybody putting work in, you know, some people may be more talented than others, but this other guy might put just as much work in, we gonna need him to win too, you know? And, um, and I think that's what's, what's so exciting about uh, this team at every level. Um, Guys, even when they have to be called up, you know, they stepping up to do what they got to do when their time is ready and they're going to be ready to go. From your 10 year career, you also know what a confident quarterback looks like. Absolutely. And after the game Sunday, we heard um, uh, Cousins talk about uh, feeling decisive, feeling like he yeah. can anticipate and throw with confidence. Mm -hmm. um, what does that do for you on the other side of the ball and, and the confidence you have as a defensive player? That, to have that guy leading home. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even going to – everybody involved on the team, when, you're, when your quarterback is, you know, doing good, feeling good, that make everybody feel better. And you can see it in the way he prepares, man, and just the confidence that he has to trust his guys to make the plays for him, even some of the throws that he's making, just unhesitant. And he, he and nobody's going to be a – Bigger critic than him than himself. I could see that just being with him for a short time. So it's good to see him feeling good about his performance, and that's going to make uh, everybody else around him better, man. So definitely, when, when he got confidence, I mean, it instills more confidence in everybody on the team. Anything else? Yeah, I have one. Yeah, um, Brady, your impact off the field, you know, has been – you know, equally as great as what you've done on the field. You visited the uh, Shepherd Center uh, this past week and spent some time with Delon Jackson from Clayton County High School football mm -hmm. team. Can you speak on that a little bit? Yeah, um, definitely it was good. I went to go see him um, yesterday and spent some time with him and his family. I wanted to see him a couple weeks prior, but circumstances. Um, so I was happy to see him, spend some time with him. and. Um, we just talked about, you know, we talked about ball, talked about life, you know, um, you know, trying to overcome hardships and stuff like that. A really, really cool kid. His best friend was there that actually was the one that reached out to the team and tried to get somebody to come holler at him. And uh, but it was good. I talked to him a little bit. I actually he let me know he was a kid that came to one of my camps over the past couple of years, which was you know a full circle moment. But regardless of that, it was um, cool to be able to be there for him and um, uh, just try to support him in it with every way I can, you know. And um, and if me, you know, going to See somebody for, you know, an hour that, that make their day better. You know what I'm saying? That's all. I mean, that's what I can do, you know. And uh, but uh, I mean, he bright kid, bright future. And uh, like I told him, the best is yet yet to come for him. And, um, you know, sometimes we don't know why things happen to us. But in due time, you know, God will show us every time. When you see Andy Dalton as a quarterback, especially since he is a veteran with such a long resume, what stands out about him on film? Uh, yeah, I got a lot of respect for Andy. Um, that was my quarterback. Uh, when I got drafted in Cincinnati in, in 2018. Uh, so I just got a lot of respect for how he goes about his work. Um, he, he played a big part in how I operate to this day. Um, and, you know, just talking about his play, um, he's a quarterback that he's always been known for getting the ball out quick and, you know, being super decisive with his reads. Um, so, yeah, I think you turn on the film against Vegas, I think he did a really good job of, you know, Moving the ball around, um, obviously they've struggled the last couple of weeks, but um, Andy's a you know a, a really great dude, really great p player as well. Um, excited to go against him and hopefully get some uh, picks off him as well. How did he help you, as you said, uh, figure out your training and how you operate back then? Yeah, um, you know, as a as a young guy, I feel like everybody should um, you know see how other guys, see how other leaders um, on your team is operating. And, um, you know, I could think back seven years ago when I first walked into a locker room and just watching how Andy, his process every every day, every week, um, along with, you know, Geno Atkins and A.J. Green, all those guys, um, just, I mean, it means a lot to for a younger guy to be able to have that example in front of him um, and being, uh, being able to have conversations with Andy as well. Uh, so, yeah, those are – some great memory, great memories as well, um, and I'm excited. Like I said, to just you know talk to Andy and uh, see how him and his family's doing. You talk about the coach was bragging on you a little bit about kind of your nose for the ball, being able to create a turnover, punch one out. Just talk about your mentality as a safety, being able to 
I gotta get the guy down. Mm -hmm. I'm also gonna take a shot at that football while I'm here. Yeah, um, it's something that I've just, uh, over the past two years, I think I've kind of taken a step forward in my game um, is, you know, making open field tackles, but at the same time, uh, trying to affect the game as much as I can. Um, you know, a lot of times as safeties, you don't get as much as, you know, the blitz is off the edge and try to get strip sacks and stuff. So um, just trying to be, um, like you said, having a knack for the ball, whether that's in the air um, or even when they're running the ball, you can still get a turnover when, you know, a team is running the ball. So. Um, that's kind of always been my mindset. It's something that I do. I practice every day. It's kind of like a habit now. Every time I'm in a position to go make a tackle, I'm going to go punch the ball as well. Um, and then if I miss the punch, and I'll, I'll, I'll make the tackle. So uh, it's just a good habit, I think, that uh, can rub off, not just on me, um, but you know everybody else on our team as well, uh, on defense, on special teams, whatever it is. Um, all, all that matters is the ball. So um, that's important. Jesse, going against this Carolina offense, what are your primary keys uh, in the defensive backfield to help ensure success? Yeah, um, the first thing is obviously they've ran the ball really well, um, and we haven't stopped the run. Um, we're not we're not the best at it right now. Um, I think that we're more than capable of being a really good uh, run stopping defense, um, but we haven't shown that on tape yet. And uh, this is another great week for us to go put it on film. Um, you know, this team is heavy, heavy, heavy run, and then you'll get some boots, um, and then you'll get some shots as well to uh, to Deontay Johnson, who I much much well respect as well. So, um, yeah, just another week that, that presents, you know, its own challenges, but we got to stop number 30. That's the, that's the uh, end goal. Last week, your offense scored on the very first drive of the game, mm -hmm. choosing to uh, receive rather than defer. What's that like as a defense to have that happen to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it doesn't feel good, obviously, when you know a team starts off and uh, they go down there and they drive the ball down and they score a touchdown. Um, it's not a good feeling at all, uh, but it happens. Um, it's not something that's you know that doesn't happen in this league. It happens, and um, you know a lot of times I think we we haven't started too fast on defense, um, but in the second half I think we're doing a really good job of just settling down and. Um, playing our keys and playing our ball. Um, I think last week they had like 20 some points in the first half. We're all pissed off, and then uh, we give up two field goals in the second half. So, just making sure that we can have that settle down mentality in the first half as well um, is something that we'll continue to work and uh, continue to get better at as a defense. When it is your offense that does score right away, how much does that help momentum for the defense and taking the field right after? Yeah, um, it definitely it, it definitely helps you. You know, loosen up a little bit. Um, you know, you're on the sideline and you see Kirk and those guys, you know, take five to seven minutes off the clock and they're going down there and scoring. Um, it it kind of gives you some type of momentum on defense to, to keep that. Um, but like I said, we haven't we haven't did that. Um, and it's a, a challenge that we're excited to do for sure. Because I know you guys focus week to week, but you're out of the gate three and two and, and in the division off to a hot start. So just kind of how excited are you at the potential of maybe this road that you guys are on? Yeah, um, you know, it's it's good that we've, um, I think we've learned a lot over these first past, you know, five weeks, um, figuring out what we're good at, what we're not good at, what's our base cause. Um, and, and the biggest thing is, like you said, it's week in and week out, but you got, it's good to see the bigger picture and you good, it's, it's good to see, you know, where we stand in our, in our division. And um, now it's all about keeping it there, um, you know, a lot of teams now are either you see guys starting to get fired, you start seeing guys getting benched. Um, you know, you can't get bored with all the details and the process of week in and week out um, if you want to be a great team. And I think that we're on the right path of, of being there. Um, but it's just you got to continue to persistently just continue to get better um, and, and, and figure out who you are and who, what you're good at. So uh, we're, we're excited. Like I said, it's a great position to be in. Um, but we can be in a better position. We know that. And uh, there's, there's a lot of things that we can get better at. Is it easier to focus on a one and four team than somebody maybe that's three and one? Uh, no, I, I would think you know every week it don't matter you know what what the record is. This is the NFL, um, and you know guys are going to come to play. Um, I don't care if it's Bryce Young out there, whether it's Andy Dalton. Guys are going to you know people have their jobs on the line uh, week in and week out. You know we got families to feed, so we're going to get their best. Um, I, I've been part of a one and four team. I've been that guy on that team and. 
uh, I know what mentality I had, um, and it's no backing down. So uh, as, a, as a captain on this team, I think you don't really care about what the record is, just really about who are we becoming week in and week out. And uh, I think we're getting close to that, and we're getting close to it. So, yeah. Yes, Jesse, uh, Justin Simmons expressed that, uh, that he felt like you're playing on a level of defensive player of the year. He's still going to get more picks than you this year. Uh, <laughs> that you guys are the best safety duo in the NFL. What are your thoughts? Yeah, um, I, I can't. I agree and I disagree with him a little bit. I, I think I will get more picks than Justin. Um, but yeah, I think that we're definitely uh, you know, a force back there. Um, just having that experience with each other, um, it's only going to get better. Uh, we haven't played our best ball together, and we both know that. And uh, just it's just nice having a guy like that that I can lean on when I'm not too sure about something or if he's or vice versa, whatever it is. Uh, Justin is a world class dude when it comes to football, to life, to everything. Um, and I'm just excited to you know share the field with him. Um, but yeah, I think I will beat him in picks. I will not let him down on that. <laughs> Do you? Do you have a, like a sense of like I'm playing really actually pretty pretty well, or I mean I, I or or do you, I mean does that does that sort of thing register with it when you're watching or when you're mm -hmm. playing? Um, yeah, I mean you could you could think of it individually. Um, I always say this league can humble you really quick. Um, you can have a really good five weeks, and the next week you play like shit. You'd be the worst player in the league. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just having that balance and having that understanding of. Yeah, you're playing well. W what else can you do better? Um, how can you elevate a guy next to you? Um, because that's not my role on this team. It's not just to be the best player on this team. It's to be the best player for this team. Um, and that's something that I've embraced. And um, like I said, excited to continue to build on because I know I'll get better throughout the uh, throughout the year as it goes. Um, so yeah, I can play. Uh, I can play better. I think. To follow up on what you were saying about the division, I believe the home team has won the last four in this series and of course that's not unusual for any NFL mm -hmm. series but what you guys are trying to do in terms of get the upper hand in this first half of the season how important would adding a road division win be to, to what you've started yeah um you know divisional games yeah I don't care if you're you're at home or away you got you gotta win them um I always say they count for two um but yeah it'd be nice to 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 complete this is part three of of our run in the south and uh, Carolina's in the way, um, you know. Whether it's at home, whether it's at their place, we got to come out here and play and uh, take take control. I think really dominate, try to dominate um, this division and uh, set the tone for the rest of the year. Usually in pro football, Jesse, there's kind of a routine every day, every week, the same thing. And Sunday afternoon games, but you guys have kind of had prime time games and a short week mm -hmm. for that this first month of the season. It's kind of nice to be back in a normal routine, and yeah. how are you guys reacting to get back to normal? Yeah, um, you know, we, we had the Thursday night game, um, and then you had a nice little three-day break. Um, you know, some people got out of here and, you know, got to do whatever they wanted to do. Um, and now it's kind of like resetting. Um, you know, we got not looking ahead or anything, but, you know, you got seven weeks before the bye. So just taking it, like I said, getting back on track, getting back to your routine, um, you know, this is a normal week. It feels good to you not know, have two games in five days or whatever it is. Uh, so, yeah, it's just good to, to go back to our normal routine and getting our walkthrough reps in and then going out here and practicing. Uh, that's where we build trust. And, uh, and, you know, on short weeks and stuff like that, you don't really get to practice. Um, you just have more walkthroughs. And um, I feel like that was a little bit of the problem last week. So excited to just continue to, to build our Build our build our trust and um, continue to practice well, um, and so it can show on Sundays. Raheem said all preseason and then still to this day that he's letting the players to like come up with the identity of his team through five games. You think you're starting to see one form? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, every game is different right now, um, but I do have a a good feel for you know our offense is coming along and then you know our defense is coming along, but. There's still a little bit, you know, our special teams gives up, you know, 40 yard, you know, return and then it trickles down to our defense giving up, you know, multiple touchdowns. So it's just learning, I think, as a team, uh, learning from the mistakes that, you know, and learning from the stuff that you're not great at right now. Um, and that's okay. Um, as long as we get there by December and um, continue to get better, like I said, every single week, 
Uh, I think that's all that matters um, and, and finding out who we are and what our identity is. Are you ready for a game that's not decided by one score? Yeah, that'd be nice, um, you know, so we can a little bit more passes in the air. And uh, but yeah, that's just part of, you know, doing our job. Um, you know, our offense got out to a great start. It could have been a couple scores uh, last week, but uh, it's just putting it all together and playing complimentary football. The Falcons pass attack. What did we just witness this, uh, in the last game? Well, I feel like we've been saying for the last couple of weeks, like we're like this close, just you know, on a couple of things, and it was cool to see those guys connect. Obviously, Drake have a big night. Kirk have a big night. The offensive line pass protection cannot be talked about enough. I mean, the, to drop back 60 plus times and the way that those guys kept playing and kept battling, like that's that's what keeps the whole thing going. So, those guys did a great job across the board. Um, but then just to see those guys connect and, and you know keep the chains moving. Obviously, we had some critical third downs and fourth downs that we hit. Um, and you know those guys did a great job all night. Kirk was spreading it around um, to everybody. Everybody got involved. So it was cool to see the whole thing kind of click. And then when you watch the tape, you're like, you know, it's a, it, it, there's a lot of stuff out there still. You know, there's a lot of a lot of plays that we left out there, um, even with the result that happened. So um, definitely some good things to learn from. But it was cool to see those guys connect uh, a lot the other night. Uh, we asked Coach earlier about the the definition of fourth down territory nowadays. It's a new definition. Seems like he's making the call, and if he says to go for it, let's go for it. But it, it's you know aggressive mindset. You know you definitely want to score as many touchdowns as you can, um, especially with an opponent like we had last week. So um, you know Roz got a great feel for that. Sometimes he's just feeling it throughout the game. Sometimes he's talking to our, you know, to, to Burbs up in the booth in terms of what the analytics say. So uh, it's always kind of a gut feel type of thing with Rob, but uh, he's done a great job, obviously, with those decisions. With that aggressive mindset, do you like having the opening kickoff and having the offense have the first say? No, it's been good. It's it's worked for us um, the Kansas City game as well. So anytime that those guys are you know put out, we're put on the grass first. That's kind of a, a challenge to us. Like, hey, let's go set the tempo for the rest of the day. And and those guys have done a good job. From looking from your time in the league, what did you know about Mooney before he got here? And what have you seen from him? Because it seems like him and Kirk have really started to click, and maybe has become go-to security blanket. However you want to phrase it. Yeah, sure. We uh, knew. Mooney coming out of Tulane, I was actually working with the receivers um, when I was in LA. I was the assistant receiver coach, so we studied those guys. I actually talked to Mooney at the combine. He doesn't remember, of course, but um, but no, we, we liked him a lot coming out and uh, just kind of always monitoring him. Loved, obviously, you know, the speed, his ability to make plays down the field, the toughness, run after catch, all those things that we're seeing now. Um, you know, he displayed that at Tulane. So, uh, he's just, uh, he's a pro's pro. He prepares the right way. He understands the intent of the plays. I think you can tell him one one time and say, hey, I think this is how you should run it. Here's the framework of it. Now you go make it your own. And so that's what's been cool. And, um, you know, him and, like you said, him and Kirk have been on the same page, which has been, which has been really awesome. But he is a very, very smart player, um, very intentional with everything he does, and it's it's showing up. Relationship with her cousins, he says, like, you know, he kind of lets them have it and lets them know it, and vice versa. Like, they kind of get out and go. Yeah, Mooney does that with everybody. He does it with me in install meetings. Like, if it's boring, he'll let me know. So, <laughs> he, uh, he, he is not afraid to speak his mind. It always comes from a good place, but he'll, he'll let you know how he feels, and you can usually see it on his face as well. If he thinks something's messed up, he's going to let you know. He always says he's like, got to be vibing. Vibing with people, is he like? Do you feel that from him? Like he's yeah, for sure. Sometimes he comes out there and he's got a ton of energy, and he's you know he's a pretty low key guy, uh, but you can definitely feel when he's got the vibe going on game day. It seems like he's always got it. He plays with great enthusiasm, and uh, watching him celebrate after the catch gets everybody excited. You called him a smart player. When did you start to learn that he had a really good grasp of? Not only the game, but the offense that you're trying to implement. It was pretty early on in, in veteran minicamp when we first took the grass against the defense, which was, you know, April, I guess. Um, we had a couple weeks of install where you're up there talking a bunch and you don't know who's picking up what. And then we went out to the grass for the first time and Mooney was running the routes exactly how you uh, were hoping they would come out. And so it was very early on uh, in veteran minicamp. You could see he was just a, a really good football player. Drake has consistently gotten better, I think, every year that he's been in the league. But you're seeing that, I think, week in and week out this year in particular. How do you see him growing? Yeah, he's uh, you know he's still a young player, still in his, his third year. Um, 
and you know he's obviously the the style of offense is a little bit different this year and so i think he's uh, another guy that just has a great feel for the game he has really good savvy as a route runner obviously great hands um all the things that that everybody liked about him coming out but uh now he just understands pro football he understands the leverages that he's working against against other defensive backs and uh what we're trying to do on each play and and again it's it's hey we give him the framework and then you make it your own and then uh those guys kind of have that connection going so it's been cool to see drake obviously as a blocker we've talked about it a ton a ton in here uh the value he brings is that as well kurt spoke after the game about <clears throat> feeling decisive in his throws and being able to predict know with confidence where the where the receivers were going to be. Obviously the statistics provided dramatic evidence, but other than the numbers, could you see that change in, in, in Kurt's confidence? Yeah, for sure. I think um, you know he's continuing to get more comfortable out there. Obviously, you know he's still less than a year removed from that injury, and so um, you know he's just going to continue to gain confidence. But you could see right away, you know, the second play of the game, obviously hitting uh, Kyle for a big one up the seam, and then it just felt like all throughout the night he was just seeing it really well. Obviously, the offensive line protected so that he could, if he did have to come off of his first read, he could click back to number two and number three, and so. Um, he's just going to continue to get more comfortable playing with these guys in game situations. And so uh, just look for him to continue to grow. How did you guys tell Kirk that he was the NFC offensive player? Is that something they just find out or do you tell him? To uh, actually, Rod just said it when he brought the team up. Um, he said no crap uh, statement, <laughs> no crap statement of the day. Kirk Cousins is the NFC uh, player of the week. So we all, you know, uh, gave him a little applause. At what point, so you said it was the... Was it the second play? Like, at what point in that game do you realize like he's doing something special right now? Like he's just on fire. Yeah, I think it was just you're so locked in in that moment that you're just you know you're just going through the flow of the game. Obviously, when things were clicking like that, you can feel it. Um, you know, I'm up in the booth, so at halftime you see like just when they flash up the stats, and you're like, whoa, we got 250 something yards. So you just felt like let's just keep putting the ball in this guy's hand uh, as much as we can. And so uh, that was really cool to see him have a performance like that. He's played a ton of football and to see him um, under the bright lights and obviously the situational football at the end of the game was uh, was pretty top notch by him. Yeah, Coach, what's you your? A lot of uh, points of, of growth on tape. Um, I'm curious what those are specifically when you're trying not to, to play such a close game at the end there. So, say that again. Oh, just in terms of improvements, what needs to be done um, so you're not like at the end going for a game winning drive? Or sure. Yeah, I think there's just little little things here and there, whether it's uh, the route detail on something, the pat, like a, a call that I had in the game where it's like, ah, that's probably not the best situation to call that. So there's things that we're all learning as coaches. Uh, and then when you do clean up the tape and you watch it, you're like, man, what if we had this and we hit this, you know, then we're not having to talk about having to clock the ball at the end of the game. So a couple little, whether it's a ball location or like I said, a play call or anything like that, uh, we're always looking to, uh, to try to improve on those. Yeah, Coach, what's your, uh, what's your process for uh, developing your game plan each week and um, how are you approaching uh, creating your game plan this week for Carolina? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a great collaboration with the entire staff. You know, we we put together the nuts and bolts of the the early down plan um, on Monday and Tuesday. Kind of put a stamp on it Tuesday night, and then we move into uh, to third downs on Wednesday. So tonight we'll get a jump on third downs, and then red zone on Thursday. But we've got such a great staff. There's a lot of us, um, and so it's been all hands on deck. Those guys, you know, give suggestions, and then, uh, you know, we formulate the plan after that. But it's been a really uh, good process. Obviously, we're learning more from, you know, it feels like the Pittsburgh game was two years ago, uh, to where we're at now. So it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun to, to collaborate with all these guys. How challenging is it though, as a coach, though, because you obviously are very pass heavy. So for the team then to, you know, not block, you know prevent that now and think you're going to run it. Like, how do you balance that and game plan it? Yeah, no, it's that's always going to be the challenge is making sure that you are balanced. And, and we know we have um, we got to get the running game going a little bit better. And that starts with certainly me calling enough runs that those, those guys can come off the ball and, and get it going. So, um, you know, it'll always be a balance to say that we were going to go into that game the other night and throw it as much as we did. You know, didn't anticipate that, but um, you just kind of feel throughout the flow of the game what's working and what's clicking. And, and uh, you know, the other night that was uh, the pass game. Yeah. Exactly. Raheem mentioned earlier today that it seemed like Tampa Bay was kind of daring you guys to throw the ball. Have you, has that been a, a, a trend throughout the season so far? With, um, I'm just curious if, Kurt, if teams are kind of basically adding curtain. Yeah, I, you know, I haven't noticed it as much. We've seen a lot of shell coverage. Um, 
throughout the first five weeks, but um, you know, just the way that they were playing the game, you know, you feel Tampa's always hard to run the football on. That's, you know, Todd Bowles and the guys that they have, Vita Vea up front, you know, they're uh, very stout up front and have been for a long time. So, um, you know, it felt like that was going to be a good option going into the game. And then um, obviously that, that worked out, um, you know, like we had hoped. We're talking about just calling stuff in general a couple of seconds ago, 81 total plays on offense. You dipped into the call sheet a little bit more than you have the whole rest of the season that we've had so far. Did it just feel good to be able to be a little bit more creative for you offensively? For sure. No, that's a great question. And uh, to answer, yeah, 100%. Like it was, you know, you go through some of these games, we've had 50 something plays, and you look down, you're like, ah, oh, didn't get to this one, didn't get to this one. So to be able to rip through a few calls, and there were some calls we called, you know, a couple times, which was, um, which was good as well. So felt good to have more plays. Obviously, you know, we got to stay on the field on third downs and those fourth down situations to have some of those, uh, some more plays, uh, you know, converting on second downs, all those things that we want to talk about. The penalties are still, you know, a problem. We got to uh, continue to address those, putting ourselves in way too many tough situations, first and 20s, uh, second and long. So that stuff we're, we're definitely wanting to, to correct so we're not putting ourselves in those, those spots. The Pittsburgh game feeling like it was a long time ago. Uh, just the, the rhythm of calling plays, does that feel like you know you have more time to think or you can think more clearly or on a power for that problem? Yeah, I, I think so. You know, that was um, obviously the first regular season game um, for everybody to be be together, whether that was you know, me calling it or Kirk playing with these guys. And so um, there was a feel it out stage. Obviously, we went against a great defense, too, that didn't make it any easier. Um, but, you know, like anything, uh, you know, repetitions is the mother of learning. And so we're all learning uh, with, with the more repetitions that we get. And so uh, that definitely feels like it was a good, you know, learning moment. And we continue to, to grow on it from there. When you all were able to clock it with one second left, how much was that something that you practiced versus like the leadership, the veteran leadership from the offense line and Kirk? Yeah, we, you know, we talk about those situations, what the cutoff is, what we're trying to accomplish, um, what the anticipated look is on defense. And so those are things that, you know, you talk about and you rep throughout training camp to say that we have repped that in the last five weeks, be lying to you. So it was a great execution by those guys understanding the intent of the play. It is stuff that we rep, um, you know, throughout training camp in those situational um you know, situations that we work all throughout camp with Raheem, and he does a great job. And Tim Burbanek, um, you know, those guys do a great job just putting those guys in those situations so it's not the first time when it's live bullets. But to see that execution by those guys um, was incredible. I'm standing up in the booth wanting to jump out of the booth, and it was uh, pretty cool for those guys to do that in that moment. Coach, you got 550 total yards, 477 in the air. Um, are, you, are you good with that? balance if you want to call it that or what kind of things are you doing if not to you know do get a little bit more production on the ground yeah I think you know every week is so different and it's just like man what does it take to win that game you know obviously the Philadelphia game the flow of the run game and the, the play action and everything was a little bit different still needed a two-minute drive to win at the end of the game but um Every game's so different. What is it going to take to win that game? I think that's what's cool about uh, our offense is those guys are willing, whether it's 50 runs, 50 passes, does not matter. Offensive line is buckling up. They're ready to go. And, and same thing with the receivers. When we're a little bit more run heavy, uh, those guys are throwing their face on people and they're ready to, uh, to block. So um, that's what you love about this team and this offense is whatever it takes to win the game, those guys are willing to do it. Uh, Coach, yeah, looking at the uh, Pants, they lost a lot of defenders, but Clowney, I guess, and Charles Harris is here for a year. And uh, how's the rookie playing in the middle? How the edge guys holding up and uh, Wallace who's taking over for Shaq Thompson? Yeah, they're they're a good defense, and those guys, you know, I know, you know, Ajiro Evero worked with him in L.A. The defensive coordinator and Jonathan Cooley's another guy that I've worked with their defensive pass game coordinator really good really good coaches and they understand the pass game they understand what offenses are trying to do so we got our hands full from a schematic standpoint and then you look at the players and you're saying man these guys I uh, know it hasn't went the way that they had anticipated starting the season but it's still a really good defense it's the NFL you got to buckle up every single Sunday knowing you're going to get their very best at their place uh, they're trying to get back on track and so 
uh, expecting a great challenge, knowing that, um, you know, like I said, those coaches on the other side are, are really good coaches and, and they got some players that can all play. The secondary uh, is a really good secondary as well. Is Horn as, uh, as advertised? Uh, good player. Yeah, really good player. Obviously, you got to know where he's at at all times and the ball location has got to be at a premium, uh, knowing that, shoot, he can take it away at any time. So uh, definitely have our hands full with that secondary, especially. This may be a weird question, but so many of the things you do at safety to affect the game are a little more subtle, maybe than a sack. They're a little more nuanced. Do you think that that makes it more difficult for a safety to catch the eye like that? Because you, you just had to explain how important that situation was, as opposed to a sack, which anybody on TV is like, oh, yeah, big play. Yeah. Does that make sense? Does yeah. That, is that why it makes it harder for a safety, or do you think that makes it harder for a safety? Yeah, there, there's a lot of uh, the games obviously shifted too. Um, the way that it's played, the way that it's called, uh, the game's just a lot different, um, you know, nowadays. But and there, there's a, I think for, our, you can make the argument for almost any position. There's a lot of plays out there where there's an unsung hero, but you know, the guy that like made the play is the one that's going to get the credit. So what I mean is like, um, you got a guy like Matthew Judon, he's gonna, he's gonna get chipped, right? Which means there's a one less guy in coverage, and which means. You know, as a defense, you can add one extra guy into coverage because you know, like, oh, we get this, he's going to chip, I can help out here. Right. And once he's done with the chip and he goes to the flat or he goes, um, you know, under across the field, um, you know, the quarterback starts feeling the pressure, throws the ball, maybe off timing, someone else gets the pick, all because, you know, Judon has to get chipped. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, yeah. like, the impact that is, so, like, Jesse has that type of impact on a game. You're, you're seeing the, Teams uh, less and less teams are taking you know deep shots, and it, it's because of his ability to go make plays on the ball in the back end. And um, you're not going to necessarily see that as a stat, you know, pop up. Right. And then when it does happen, you got to be able to make the play, and he's been making them. So where do you see <clears throat> where do you see Jesse rank and players you've played with who are able to just make those impact plays you're talking about? Yeah, um, like right off the top of my head, it, it, like one or two, I think. Uh, you know, Aqib Talib was one of those guys. Um, obviously, you know, when I was playing with Pat, Pat's one of those guys. And, um, you know, we see him do it week in and week out. Um, but, you know, teams are staying away from throwing at Pat. And then the luxury of playing with Aqib was Chris was on the other side. So, you know, they, they had to pick their poison with that. And uh, yeah, Jesse's like the same way, right? Like anytime he's in the realm of the play, um, you know, like a big impact play is bound to be happening. He's going to make more than he, than he misses. And so, uh, yeah, he's definitely up there. One of the best, if not the best. What are you talking about unsung heroes? <clears throat> Who pops out to you as you're watching film as a guy that you don't think gets enough credit in some of those plays that you were describing to Josh a little bit earlier? Mm, uh, like in our defense? Yeah. yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, you know, I, my, my first, the first person I thought of was uh, Caden. I think, uh, I think Cade does so much communication-wise, um, execution-wise, and there's a lot of moving parts, um, especially in our defense at that backer position. And also, too, it, it's something subtle, but when guys are rotating in and out, right, like Nate was in there early, then Troy, then JD, that's, that's hard. Um, even though they're in the same room, it's not the same person. And even though you go over the film, there's, uh, there's so much that needs to be said about like playing with the same guy and it, it just goes unnoticed and so um, I think I think Kaden would be that guy. When talking about running backs, coaches talk about the hot hand and things like that. For an offensive lineman, is there um, are there games where you get into like a better flow in terms of like run blocking specifically to be able to run the ball better or is it more just kind of scheme related as to what teams are presenting? Um, I think you definitely get in a flow but I think the flow comes from just understanding one you want to, like if you're in you know, if you're not um, staying, you know, moving the chains, you know, you know you're going to be out of run situations. So I think that's part of the challenge. And then when we do get our opportunities to be effective, so they're able to be called again. Um, but there is a flow kind of state in it where you know you get a run, you know how the guy fits it, you know how they're feeling, um, you got your indicators, and um, so those kind of build as the game goes along. Um, and then you know defenses are fresh in the first quarter, and then you know over time you know they begin to wear down. Um, so there's a little bit of that aspect in it as well. Uh, Rook got his first playing action on Thursday. Talked to Raheem about him. He said going up against you in practice has been a great training for him. What have you kind of noticed from him over the course of even training camp, but up to this point? Yeah, he's a really explosive player, and um, you know he's he's only worked his butt off every single day he's been in here, and the uh, reps that he has working. Um, 
has been awesome. He's definitely making me better as an offensive lineman. I think he's a really good uh, pass rusher. Um, and so that has only helped us as an offense. And so I'm really looking forward to the opportunities that he gets to get, and I hope he makes a bunch of plays for us. Chris, how critical is Bijan Robinson in pass protection? I know a pickup of Vita Vea is a lot to ask of him, but other than that, how good do you see him developing in that aspect of his game? Uh, Bijan's awesome. I think it just shows the type of character guy he is, whatever's asked of him. Um, he goes up there and fits it, and uh, he makes us right in a lot of situations, like, you know, fitting up on Vita. Um, <laughs> so he's, he's great to have back there. Both him and Tyler are, are awesome guys, and I think it just shows their selflessness that they're willing to do whatever it takes. When you go back and watch that tape of him going up against Vita, what's your thought process on that? Uh, we can't have mental mistakes to let him go through um, and and hit Vita, but, you know. So that's that's the biggest thing. How much has the the veteran leadership on the line with Kirk no, kind, kind of helped of you guys in these moments where you know you're playing close games almost every game? Yeah, it's um, his common presence, and then I think there's a belief that we can do it. I think we've proved it now three weeks in Kansas City. We had an opportunity to go down there and score, and so I think there's belief in what we've already achieved, and so when we get those, op you know, those situations, um, I think there's confidence in it. What does that do for a team moving forward, just knowing, like, whether it's offense, defense, special teams, even, like, someone's going to make a play? Uh, I just think there's belief. Um, you know, that you're always in it. Like, you're never out of it, no matter how, you know, desperate it is. All right, we have 40 seconds, no timeouts. You know, you're confident those guys are going to go make a chunk play, and it's going to be good. Uh, what can you say about Kirk winning NFC Offensive Player of the Week after his performance on Thursday? Oh, I mean, well, well deserved. I mean, if anybody, it should have been him. Uh, I didn't know that, but congratulations to Kirk. And I'm too proud of him. How do you feel like y'all's connection has really progressed here through the first couple of weeks, and what's maybe been the changing of the tide, so to speak? Uh, I mean, changing of the tides. Uh, I think it's just a just something that we, you know, uh, made a focus on it, you know, from OTAs. And um, like, it's not only just me; it's just you know, all the guys in the room offensively as well. So um, we've done a good job of you know uh, understanding that we are behind the curve of everybody that has been together, um, and uh, we've been doing a very good job of you know um, having communication, healthy communication, and um, you know when there's like negative things going on we you know have have communication good communication so everything's been good on that that hand and um when you got those things um communication wise you know the relationship can go good so. one thing kirk was talking about post game was that he did feel like the connection kind of took a step forward with the receivers yep. whether it was figuring out where you guys were going to be or placing the ball in the right spot did you get a sense of that throughout the game and especially when you look at the film back uh for sure there's definitely um there's definitely a, a good flow and um just a uh, understanding of um, when we're at practice, there's something may may go on. Like there was things in um, the Saints game that uh, that came up in the last game, and um, it was things that we talked about and just getting on the same page. And um, that's just how it's going to look throughout the rest of the season. Just making sure we we're talking and just being on the same page. Raw was saying that you're kind of a cerebral leader in that receiver room. Okay. How would you describe your leadership? Style? Uh, they, you know, they sit there and try to like be like, oh. Uh, be the guy, be the leader guy. I just want to be one of the guys and just play football and, uh, you know, uh, earn my spot just like as well as everybody yeah. else. So, I mean, if anybody has some questions, I'm willing to answer. But other than that, I'm just vibing. Kirk has, Kirk has kind of told us that, you know, you're so on point that you're almost like a quarterback. And, mm -hmm. you know, he feels like he has to kind of be on his P's and Q's when he talks uh, to you. Um, what, what does that mean? Are there any <laughs> examples of something where, you know, you, you call Kirk out like, oh, no, actually, uh, actually it's like this. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's, I mean, he has that same thing with me. If I'm messing up, I mean, I, I you know, um, want that same, you know, energy. You know, get onto me, I get onto you. And it's just a, just a part of the dynamic of the relationship. And uh, once you understand the relationship you have with a person, um, you can, you know, push them push some errors, you know, understand, like, it's not, it's nothing but love. Like, at the end of the day, we want to win the game and um, have fun doing it, so. Have you ever called him out on anything? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you want to like, give us a little, no, uh, little like, <laughs> Is it tough love? Like, you're like, yo, man, you missed me on this route or anything like that? Uh, it's not even just me. It's like other things with some, something else missing or it's like emotion or something mm -hmm. uh, operational and he's just like, all right, yeah, I got you. And then it's something sometimes with me. I mean, I'm not perfect. I mean, I do things, you know, um, mistakenly sometimes and uh, it's just all about having somebody to keep you uh, accountable and I mean it could be the you know um, oldest guy or the youngest guy in the, in the room you know just uh, 
if you have that respect for yourself, you have that standard for yourself, and you can uh, have a voice when you're sp speaking to other guys. So. so how do you feel about his swag in the game, kind of being, like, <laughs> swagless? Uh, his words, not mine. Yeah, I mean, he has some type of swag for sure. He has some type of swag. I wouldn't give him uh, no swag, but um, I guess – his his demeanor is his no swag is his swag mm -hmm. so but uh he has some swag for sure though you like his swag surfing that was crazy <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, was, he was saying after the game that his biggest step in, in that buccaneers game was just the trust and the anticipation aspect. Yeah. did you notice that from him in that game or has it been a kind of a i'm sure to some point it's been yeah. a, like a progression to get there but did you i think that? i think it's just um you know um we didn't have those preseason games so just having, you know, repetition wise and um, just understanding in the game when things are clicking and when you're in that flow and nothing is getting you out of that flow state, it's just hard to knock you out. So um, it's just, it was good to, you know, do that in the game. And obviously our running game is very good. And then they gave us the opportunity to do good on the passing game. So, um, I mean, we have shown that whatever whatever you want to be able to you know take away we'll be able to you know do the other way so Justin said he pretty much felt like that Kirk was going to be the NFC offensive player of the yeah. week after that game just did you think the same and what are your reactions now that he is I don't even pay attention to none of that stuff like I just like I said I'm always bobbing so. <laughs> Darnell we're through a healthy amount of games for you to be able to give a, a good judgment on where you feel like this offense is you've been on other teams before yeah. another team before so what do you feel like is different here and what's working? Um, I mean, as far as offensively, we we definitely have um, Kirk. I mean, he's just he's he's the confidence in the huddle. He brings in that that juice. It's it's about like how you approach the huddle and like everything within it. Like the person that comes in there and you know saying the play and just understanding like, hey, Drake, I'm coming to you on this. Like, get open. Like, just bringing that confidence and. Um, if you have, have one of those guys and you're just understanding, like, hey, all right, I am getting the ball in this play and I can just be comfortable, like, just feeling out of way, um, things are – he makes everybody around comfortable. So I definitely have to give that to Kurt. So. Through all these close games, what do you think the team has learned about themselves? Um, I mean, I don't think we want to be in the close games, but, I mean, it definitely shows that we can, you know, we're always in it. We're never out of it. And um, – um, there's always mistakes going on, and uh, somebody's going to have to make a big play or make some type of play to uh, put us back on top. So there's a lot of mistakes going on throughout, throughout that whole game that could have went south for us. And um, there was always somebody else making another play to put us back on top to have the you know, advantage to win the game. So How much do you see Drake London just consistently improving? Uh, he, I mean, he's been doing his thing since I got here. I mean, he's a uh, boss in my eyes, and as soon as, um, as soon as I got here, and um, he's continued to take that step forward. And I mean, he's gonna he's gonna continue to make his make his mark. And um, I'm I'm happy to be a part of it. Happy to be in the huddle with him. Happy to be, you know, his partner. And um, yeah, let's I mean, continue to make some noise. Rock well, called him an emotional leader in yeah. that room. Uh, he definitely he definitely can get you know aggressive and. Uh, a little bit angry, but it's good angry though. So, <laughs> so what's the vibe when you all are starting to go for it on fourth down? What's the fourth down vibe? Uh, I mean, I mean, wherever the yardage is, I mean, we got to go get it. So, um, I mean, I don't think down in distance or whatever down it is, we we always feel like whatever play we can get, whatever play we have in, we can score on. So, um, I don't think the down in distance or whatever it is changes our mindset. Yeah, but um. That's a different uh, approach than the old days. See, the team's going for fourth down all the time. Oh, see, I have no idea about you know the old days of oh, being an Atlanta yeah. Falcon. But uh, I mean, if that's that's our mindset, I mean, we trust our defense. So um, they 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 pull us out of you know a lot of the situations. So um, if we can go out there, you know, if we don't get it, we trust that they can do it. They can stop it. So not to be ridiculous, but. Since you are a quote unquote leader, I know you're just always gotcha. vibing. Yep. <laughs> um, Kirk Cousins not knowing how to swag surf. Yeah. Do you take it upon yourself to be like, hey, where have you been? This has been around for a yeah. long time. Uh, <laughs> I mean, everybody has their own, you know, wavelength. So, uh, I mean, he teaches, he, he probably has some things that, he definitely has some things like in the huddle. It'll be like, like an old school song playing and he'll be singing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to just stay over here. So, <laughs> you know, everybody has their own wavelength and, you know, they, they attach to that. So.
I know it's early, obviously, still in the season, but you guys are undefeated in the division. So how can that just help with the confidence of this team moving forward? Oh, uh, understanding that that um, we have more division games coming up very soon, and by week 12, we'll understand where we are um, for the playoffs and the rest of the season. So um, we have to continue to stay focused and um, uh, continue to grind out this, these next few weeks and understand and get a good place for ourselves and uh, ahead before the season's even over. So, Did you feel like there was a learning curve at all in the run of play that you were like, oh, yeah, like, okay, now I'm in the NFL, like something specifically? Uh, I wouldn't say nothing specific, but just you just have you just know you have to bring it more. Like you have to turn it up. You know, it's not college. You know, everybody's good. Everybody's here for a reason. And so just knowing that you have to just be on your stuff every single snap, I pretty much say it's just, just a different edge. Sorry if I'm asking you to repeat yourself. What point did you realize you were going to be at? Um, I'd say... Just probably like a couple of days into the week, you know, yeah. just started getting more reps and stuff like that. And then they told me, and, you know, I have my mindset ready. To, I always got my mindset ready to play regardless until they tell me I'm not playing. So pretty much the same deal. What was your immediate reaction when you heard officially that? Of course. Yeah, I'm happy, man. You know, <laughs> who doesn't love to go out there and play football? So just knowing that I get another opportunity to play a game, just get another game under my belt, was just really exciting for me. How was it for you and what were you able to take away kind of just being on the yeah. sidelines and watching this team that first It was really good, man. I didn't know the fans get rowdy like that. <laughs> the fans was getting real rowdy, you know, shout out to the fans. <laughs> and, um, you know, yeah, it was just it was just the atmosphere. It was just crazy. Just night game, everything you could ask for. Night game, conference opponent, great team, you know, just everything you could ask for for my first game. So, hey, I'm happy it turned out the way it turned out. And then what were you able to learn about this team when you weren't playing? Like, how, what were you kind of able to see a different perspective? Yeah, just, yeah, it is a different perspective, you know, just – because it, it felt like I wasn't playing, but in my head I was playing because I'm locked into the game, taking every snap, whatever Grady, Dio, Eddie, whatever they're doing, I'm watching it. I'm locked in. I've seen every single snap a hundred times, so it felt like I was playing too. So As a young guy, you know, what's it like to be on a defense with Jesse Bates, a guy who can make massive impact plays game after game? It's really good. It's really inspirational to see just knowing that. Just, he has a knack for like he's just always he's always thinking, always talking, communicating, and just trying to pick up tips and tricks from him to help to help my game, help improve my game. So it's really good to have a guy like that on our team. Rook, you were talking about just how prepared you were for this one. I know when you're a backup and you go in as a starter, you always have to prepare like you're the one starting. Mm -hmm. So aside from just watching everything that everyone did, what else were you doing that made you feel really ready? Uh, yeah, just watching the extra tape, you know, putting those extra hours in, the same old extra technique after practice, just things like just doing all the extras that I normally would always do and you know just regardless like I could be the last person on the depth chart but I'm going to prepare like I'm about to play every single snap and I'm gonna do that every week and that's just what's required of me and that's what I require for myself so that's what I'll do. When did that start for you? Who kind of instilled that in you? I'd probably say right around when Coach Easton came like my toward my sophomore junior year you know at the, it was kind of a position battle me Brian Tyler as a lot of those guys and you know he just said just prepare like you about to play every single snap and that's when he said that I was like hmm let me start doing that and I just took that on and I just kept doing it and just because I got here I won't stop I'll still do the same thing for as long as I play. Assuming it made Sunday a lot easier. It did it definitely did it made it a lot easier yeah you, you always feel more confident when you're actually when you're over prepared you feel way more confident it feels like you've been there before because you've seen it a whole bunch of times. So. Did you feel like you kind of had to hold yourself back a little bit in that first play did you feel like you were just like amped raring to go? I was def definitely antsy man you know you're just <laughs> it's your first live snap like you're just a lot is going through your mind so, you know, you have to take a deep breath, calm down. And at the end of the day, man, it's, you're just playing some ball. So just go out there and play your game and do it with max effort. Who was your first call when you found out? Um, I'd probably say my dad. I mean, I always talk to my dad. My dad, he texts me like 10 times a day. <laughs> so he just always texts me, sending me encouraging messages, and I really appreciate that from him. So if you're seeing this, shout out to you. <laughs> you talk about max effort. Grady Jarrett is a max effort guy. What have you learned from him in your just short time around you so far. Yeah, just he doesn't he doesn't take no for an answer. Like we are he doesn't take no for an answer. And that's the mindset you should have in the trenches. It's not friendly in the trenches. It's not pretty. You're gonna have to get in there and get down and dirty. And Grady he does that. He sticks his nose and stuff, his face and stuff. It's just reckless abandonment. And so just seeing him do that is so encouraging because he's been playing for ten years and he's still doing that. And this is my first year so I'm trying to I gotta keep up with him, you know, so it's it's very encouraging to see. I think it's fair to say you probably weren't too surprised when you saw that um, Kirk Cousins was named the NFC Offensive Player of the Week. Just what can you say about that honor for him and his performance on Sunday? 
or Thursday, whenever it was. I would say uh, that's a blessing, you know. Uh, and for me, it's just watching him every day work from his uh, injury, from OTAs, and just how he goes about every day. It's not surprising. How do you continue to work on your connection with him during practice? Well, I think it's genuine, you know. Uh, just sharing, sharing a common, common love for the game, you know. Uh, and just for me, going out there playing ball, just being there when I need to be there, when he, when he need me to be there, uh, on the field, off the field, uh, and vice versa. You know, it's just I think it's a locker room thing, off the field thing that goes onto the field. Speaking of connection, you know, Kirk was saying after the game that he really did feel like it took a step forward, being able to figure out where you guys were going to be and just that quarterback-receiver connection in-game and then watching back on the film. How do you feel like it did take a step forward? I think it took a step forward uh, weeks ago, you know, just being in these tough games. I and mean, every game's been close. Every game's been uh, crunch time. And uh, some, some we won, some we lost. Uh, but the name of the game is win. And at the end, that's where you want to have more wins and losses on the uh, tally chart. Uh, but for us, I feel like every day we come to work, we get better, better stack, stack, uh, stack days brick by brick. Uh, and at the end, I think the uh, free throw labor is show.